Good evening. Uh, we'll start the session because uh, even my coordinator is getting late. So we'll start the session now. Good evening once again. It's a great pleasure for me to welcome you all to this today's lecture. Uh, This is the third uh, event for the session and the first one for 2023. So it's a great pleasure for me to for me to welcome you all for the session and special first time foremost the participants in physical here and the participants who are joining online. Actually, it's a great honor for me to. Welcome our resource person today, Professor Janaka Ruankura. Actually, he is in his holidays in Sri Lanka, but he accepted the request honestly and without any hesitation. So thank you for that and appreciate a lot. I welcome our president-elect, Professor Ranjiti Sanaya, for the session. You are with us with your, all the busy schedules. And actually, I must especially thank you, want to thank you because I got the resource person from the Kennedy Conference. So it was, a, it was a great opportunity for all of us and who joined the seminar. Yeah, thank you. Let me introduce our resource person now. He's the Vice Provost and Associate Vice President Research under the International Era and Force of Civil Engineering at the University of Calgary, Canada. He earned a BSc in conduit serving for the, from the University of Moratua, MSc in construction management from Arizona State University, and a PhD in construction engineering and management from the University of Alberta. It is proud to say, Professor Juan Kuri is probably the first time only nat <coughs> native Sri Lankan to have obtained a competitive national level research chair person, Canada research chair in project management systems and then to become a senior administrative lead, administrative lead in the university. He has been recognized with many national and international awards. He's a fellow of the Canadian Society for Civil Engineering. He was the fourth Canadian and first Sri Lanka to be inducted as a member of the National Academy of Construction of the United States of America. Most importantly, he was recognized as a top 25 Canadian immigrant introduced by the Prime Minister of Canada. Actually, that is not far away in 2022. Professor Wankura's presentation includes a seven point model called Receipt for Success based on his experience, which may help us to build successful plans and success without services. I'm confident that this will be a very successful event and a lecture, which is so please enjoy that. Over to you, Professor. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. And uh, I guess I'm going to showcase my life before. So uh, let's see what I can. You all can hear me? Okay. Right. Yeah. So I want to thank. Uh, the uh, institution for inviting me uh, to present this uh, talk today. I know that we tried it last week as well, but due to unavoidable circumstances, we have postponed it. But it's it's wonderful for me to be here um, and to give a talk uh, that is something that I I, I believe that uh, over the years uh, that I kind of when I go look back into my history and say. I mean, what is the success for us? How can we achieve success? And I'm going to start saying um, a few statements that I have been telling my engineering undergraduate students over the years when I was teaching. And the three statements I always say, you are hired for your technical skills. You may be promoted for the, for the leadership and management skills. 
you may be fired for the lack of people skills. And I think it's very important that whatever, the, especially in, in, in our fields of engineering, and obviously we want our engineers to have the technical capacity, the technical expertise. That's why in our universities, we produce them. We are overloaded with them with courses on engineering and they basically graduate with a, a Bachelor of Science in Engineering. Um, and then of course, it's mostly technical courses. And then we realize sometimes when they get into industry and then that's where through experience, they will learn other things. So that to become a comprehensively a good engineer and the engineer to, so some of the engineers will stay in their technical part, right? They are good technical engineers, nothing wrong with that because they become really, you know, super engineers with, with whatever the field they are in. Some of the engineers take the path to get into leadership, administration, they become entrepreneurs, right? And some of them can go to politics. That's a different aspect of it, right? But the key is that how do we develop all-round capacities and capabilities of our engineers? Because I've been dealing with, and I'm, I'm going to Canada now for, for, for a while. I'm going to Canada. And so when I, when I speak to my industry people in Canada, sometimes they say, you know, you, you, you produce engineers, but we have to really train them when they come to industry. And that's kind of a little bit insulting. Not everybody's saying that. But some people, sometimes they say that you, you do all these things in the university, but sometimes they lack X, Y, and Z. So, so can we do all that during that four year? No, we cannot. It's very difficult. But I think we are doing the right thing by producing good engineers through our university, right? So therefore, but then how do we make sure that engineers will take the advantage and enhance other skill sets? Sometimes people call it soft skills. I don't use the word soft skills. I call it fundamental skills. So some of the fundamental skills are really, really critical for them to become better engineers. And then they become engineering managers. They become engineering leaders. They become you know, um, company CEOs, right? And some of them get into the management side of things. I think you know it's really, really important, but there is a path for them to do that. So during today's talk, I may use some of my examples, and this is not for boasting purposes. I might use my very good friend and president-elect, Professor Ranjit Sanak, as an example, because I know him too well, um, of some of his uh, uh, stories and success stories as well. I may use some of the other people without telling them who they are. But just the key is, when I look back, recently I developed this model and to say, what does the recipe for success mean? Right? What, what are the key components that helped me when I, uh, when I was an undergraduate student uh, from 1986 to 1992 at the University of Moratua? I did my Bachelor of Science in Quantity Survey. We were the most fortunate student, very privileged students where we spent six years for a four-year degree, right? And that was that was really a fantastic opportunity. I mean, you don't get to spend more time in the university, but we did. We, we spent six years, and that that I call it a little bit of a privilege. But you know, um, but and today in Canada, I've been recognized as a dual professional, both as a professional engineer as well as a professional quantity survey. Unfortunately, my QS part ended and died in 1995. My, my batchmates and my colleagues are quite mad with me for that, but that's a reality. Because you know, I, I, I went to uh, uh, two countries, United States and Canada, where the profession of QS is not as, as big as uh, countries like uh, UK, Australia, um, and the Middle East. Uh, and then for me to survive in my environment, uh, and also to uh, in in the in the engineering school, of course, you know, I had to uh, go through and get myself qualified in engineering as well. Because today in Canada, in our university, we will not be even tenure pro uh, professors without getting professional qualifications of uh, professional engineering. They can't get tenure. They they can't get promoted because that becomes now a condition. Which because in Canada, engineering is a regulated profession. You cannot use loosely use the title engineer. 
you can only use the title engineer if you have uh, if you have a PH, professional engineer. Otherwise, the graduates who graduate from Canada, we call it EIT, engineer in training, right? Anyone, other people that, you know, they call it engineer, they, they are not supposed to be using it. They don't use the title because you cannot, unless you are registered and it's a very regulated profession. And then we have several provinces and each province is, you know, regulating those uh, profession, right? But anyway, just giving a little bit of background from, uh, from where I come from, but, you know, I think I just want to, uh, I mean, you, you mentioned about my uh, background, so what's happening? The mouse is not. Okay, right. So I'm just going to briefly mention, uh, I mean, I know, I know um, she uh, is, uh, mentioned about uh, my background, but technically saying, yes, I did my undergraduate degree at the University of uh, Moratua. And uh, it's, okay. it's good now, right? Can we move this window a little bit away? Yeah, I don't need it. I mean, I can see that. Yeah, that's good. That's good enough, right? Then I worked as a lecturer at the University of Moratua before I moved into uh, into Arizona State, did my master's. And for master's, we went to uh, my PhD in the University of Alberta. And then I started at the University of uh, Calgary as an assistant professor in, in, in the Department of Civil Engineering. And then from there, associate professor, you know, became a Canada research chair in project management system, which is a nationally appointed a chair. Um, and then, then also became a professor in 2011. But then, of course, uh, I, you know, some of my administrative work, and I moved away from my academic life in 2013, and I became a vice provost international, which is equivalent to a, a pro vice chancellor uh, international uh, in the UK system. But now I occupy the pro vice chancellor role both as research and international. Right. Uh, but this is the model, and I, you know, I mean. I, I want to sort of give it a give it a shot on this one in terms of since we are also we also have many of them uh, online. I'm not giving my words right now, so I'm going to try and see whether who could um, uh, uh, say what is V stands, what is V P stands, what T stands. So I'm going to explain the seven point model, but let's see whether anybody can say what's V P and T, and I will try to monitor the. Um, uh, the chat room to see whether there's any anyone else would would actually uh, come up with the words. Oh, excuse me. Oh. How do I minimize? Yeah. On the, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So anybody, what's V, P, and T stands for? Any guesses? Let's try the audience here. Yeah. And also let's see whether the, those who are in online, are they really listening to it and find out whether anybody can guess that. Okay, anyone from the audience? Something that I have been seeing lacking in this country, especially the politicians. Hmm? Visha, absolutely, the Visha. What's P? Plan. Plan. Planning. Very good. What's T? What's T? So think about it. your visioning, your planning. Target. Did I hear the word target? Targeting, yes. So first one, uh, <clears throat> this is not easy. I'm a Mac user, not a Windows user also. Oh, excuse me. So this one stands vision planning and targets. Okay. So I think for all of us, and I'm going to go back to the previous slide to say that for especially young engineers or young anybody, 
even the students who are at the schools. It is really, really important for all of us to think about what's the future looks like. What's our career plan looks like? What do we want to be in another three years from, another five years from? Sometimes it may be difficult to target you know, a 10-year horizon. But it would be good for us to even have a sense like, I sometimes ask when, you, when students studying at the university, like, what do you want to do after you graduate? Right? I think you should have that vision in your mind. It really helps you to guide yourself to where you want to be. Right? Of course, there are uncertainties. You know, things may not happen in the same way that you plan, but I think it would be good to do that. And if you, those who do not have a career plan, my advice is at least take a piece of paper one day, just relax and think about what do I really want to do? Where do I want to be ended up in, right? And then set a plan, set a, tar, set a basic vision and say, this is what I wanted. And you can set a little plan and say, okay, this is what I'm going to do to get to, to that vision, right? And then monitor that plan. Maybe take that piece of paper every six months to find out, am I reaching my plan? Am I getting closer to my plan? Sometimes your plan may be a little too ambitious. It's okay to be ambitious, right? If it's too ambitious, how do you lower down and see whether that you can achieve your vision? Maybe you will realize the plan is too easy to achieve, and then you can change that. I think it's important. That's where the principles of agility comes in place. Remember what happened in COVID times, right? Now, there are so many people today online rather than having uh, the, the, the auditorium filled with people. And we have to find an alternative way of doing things, the principles of agility. So therefore, it's important that you set a vision for yourself, develop a career plan, monitor the plan, make the necessary adjustments to get to where you want to be. Right? Something that is really critical, and this is where I will, I will bring Professor Ranjit Dishanayaka's name, very optimistic. Whenever I ask for something, he said, he will never say no to me. I said, let's try it. We should, we should be able to do it. Let's do it. I like that positive attitude because it's important. You're optimistic. You don't want, you're, you're not going to be, we are not a negative thinking because, I'm, and I find so many people, when you bring something, yeah, they have been very negative. They will tell 12, 20 reasons not to do it. And I always tell them, give me three reasons how to make it happen rather than giving me 20 reasons not to do it, right? Because I believe, and I think uh, Professor Dishanaka knows me also, you know, I'm very optimistic and the word impossible is not in my vocabulary, but I put some conditions on that. As long as you target anything ethically, especially we as professionals, ethically and professionally, and if the, ta and if the task or the activity is realistic, and if you have a commitment to make it happen, like I cannot say that I'm going to touch the sky, which is not realistic. Right? I mean, you can, so nothing is impossible, has some restrictions. As long as you're ethically handled, professionally handled, it's realistic, and you're committed to make it happen. And at the same time, I think it's always good for us to think, you know, whatever the direction you can go, the climb the tallest tree that you can possibly go, you know, and see whether where you can achieve your, uh, that your targets, your vision and set a vision. And as I said, I, I think this is something that I, I am seeing, especially, you know, our country have seen it. I mean, sometimes the leaders come and set visions, but they are not practical, right? It's, it's very important that we set a vision that is practical that can be achievable and we can monitor that, that plan and then we target to get to that success, right? And it, it's okay to set high quality standards. There's nothing wrong with that, right? And then the other thing that I'm always saying to people is, if you are in a comfort zone, where right? we are, I'm doing a good job, I have a decent job, I'm getting a good salary, I'm happy about my job, why would I worry about trying something new? Right? If you, unless you try new initiatives, you don't know where you can get to, the, to those, those achievements. So I think it's important that 
especially when you are in a comfort zone. And I, it's like a small pyramid. If you have a small pyramid, how do you expand, expand that pyramid so that it will become better for you? It, it actually can achieve many other, 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 other achievements. If you, if you, if you um, uh, think about some of these other options of getting there, right? And I, and I you know, used to play a game where um, to, to show how our mind is trained. If I, if, I, if, you, if I train your mind on some aspects of it, you are blocked within that mindset. And then you don't, sometimes you used to be out of the box thinking because you are not thinking outside of that because you are so trained in your mindset that you don't want to think differently, right? So that, that's why I'm going to come back and say, I think it's good before we talk about a vision for a company, vision for a project, vision for a country, you should have a vision for ourselves, right? What's the vision for me? What am I going to get to, to that? And how am I going to get to that? What's my plan? How am I going to target something, right? And I, you know, I, I, I'm a living example of always strive that, you know, setting up visions and setting up plans and setting up targets so that I could get to those things. Okay. So the second one that I'm going to talk about, I guess. So let me try the next word, two, two keywords, L and E. What do you think L and E stands for? Huh? Learning and education, no, not actually. It's interesting. I gave a talk at my school yesterday. I heard exactly the same two words leadership. 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 How do you, right? Okay, I'll, I'll, the other, the word E is linked to leadership. Excellence. Leadership and excellence. The reason I'm saying that. Not all, not everyone become leaders, right? And sometimes you know that through our living examples, some leaders come, but we don't see them as leaders. Right? I think you need to prove yourself that you are a leader or the others will say, he is a leader, she is a leader, right? Because and the others will recognize you are a leader. So leadership is good, but you don't want to be just a leader that other will say, well, he's like a useless leader, right? If they say you are a leader, you are a, uh, uh, an excellent leader, or you are making an, you are an inspiring leader, you make an impact to society, you will make an impact to the company, you impact to whatever, I think then it is really critical to showcase that leadership, right? Engineers, I strongly urge you because I think getting into an engineering degree is a, is, a, is a privilege in my opinion. It's a professional degree, right? Engineers, I think it would be really good for you all to think about looking at the leadership aspects because you, know, you might take a leadership position one day, right? I think that's the way that we like to see as academics in our universities. We want our students, once they get into technical qualifications and for them to, to, to become leaders, uh, as they uh, you know grow you know down the road, but the key is like you know this is you know something that I have been paying a lot of attention from my school days, right? I think it's important that you know leadership is 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 critical, but you need to make sure that you you portray yourself as a leader and others will recognize you as a leader, right? I will show you some of my old pictures from from my school days. Of course, I used to have lots of uh, names when I was at school because I was too much involved with societies and associations, you know. And uh, but but I think it really helped me. I studied at Nalanda. You know, I did all kinds of activities anywhere from you know senior prefect, you know, president of a Buddhist association, secretary of a drama and society. So they call me Sangam Palo. That's okay. It, it helped me. But it, it really helped me because I actually learned the principles of that leadership, you know, uh, from school. I practiced them at my school. It really helped them to, uh, to balance my educational activities while doing other leadership activities. 
And then I'll show you an example. Actually, I purposely wanted to bring this slide to you because in universities, it's very difficult to bring politicians into universities. And this is, in my opinion, and I am not afraid to say that, this is one of the greatest people that we had in this country, late Ladita Tratmudali, who was the Minister of <clears throat> Education and Higher Education at that time when we were in the university. I call it the best president that we never had. Right? So characters like that was very well qualified. And we, when he was the, the, uh, the minister, we wanted to bring him to the university. But of course, with the university environment, that was not possible. So instead of that, we brought him as a chief guest for a university matter organized by the students at Mount Lanyon Hotel. That was a brave affair. We made it happen. We raised money to, uh, actually this is uh, to do an awareness program on, 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 on quantity serving at that time, right? But it was, and then of course we were targeted by some of the student leaders in the campus saying that, you know, they brought a minister for an event, but yeah, these things happen, but you need to take the challenge. Because at that time, our objective was to enhance our profession. And we wanted to get a qualified person, get attention, and then invite a lot of industry professionals, right? And for this one, we got many engineers, architects, QSers, and others came, you know, and then so we created that setup in there. But where did that come from? The grassroots level. So my advice to you is that whatever the stage that you are in is really important that if you think you can provide leadership, if you think you can be a better leader, I can try it out. It's not going to harm you, right? So then this is where I believe some of the things that I have done, those my younger days, had stayed on with me I did when I did other activities. And when I was really active in research, when I was really active in research and being a Canada research chair, I resigned from the research chair, applied for a position for a senior leadership position at the university, and I moved away from, uh, from my research to a, a leadership position. I think that is Sangha Palwa thing came back again in, in a different way, where I wanted to try something differently, right? Of course, it's good that always you try these new initiatives. It really helps. It, in my opinion, it helped me because it gave me a different path to try different things and then to make an impact to, uh, to society, to the university, to the community, and to the country. And I think that's important that we do that, right? And I also, that's where, you know, sort of, I want to say that even for me, uh, that unless you try those new initiatives, you would not get to those achievements, right? My next one is something that, uh, that I teach and I practice and I do some consulting as well, but it says T and R. What is that? What's T and R stands for? I believe we all do this one. I know you do this. He's very good at it. Taking risks. Unless you take risks, you don't know what you will get to the next step, right? Some of, I mean, some of us are risk takers. Some of them, some of us are not risk takers, right? And we, you know, some of us will take a long time in analyzing, analyzing, overanalyzing, and then say, you know what, let's not take this new initiative. I would do whatever. I stay there. Some of the others might take the bigger risks and try new initiatives. You may be successful, but unless you try, you don't know where your success looks like. Right? Because anything that we do, like I mean, I talk about, especially in my project management environment, in a new project, there's so much uncertainties at the very beginning. We don't know everything. Right? And some of the uncertainties is the reason that we create risks. Right? So what do we do in a, in, a, in a project? We identify those risks. We qualify the risks. We assess the risks. We call it quantification of risks. 
right? And we ask them, what's the probability of that thing happening? And if that happened, what would be the impact of that? And then we come up with what they call risk responses, which can be eliminate the risk, mitigate the risk, transfer the risk, right? There are some options available. Or oh, accept the risk, right? Again, I'll give an example, which is actually a, one of my very uh, life uh, uh, journeys that change, change my direction. So when I was doing my master's at Arizona State University, of course, I wanted to do, to do my PhD. So I applied to a number of universities in the US. And I put one application to a Canadian university. Within two weeks, the, the, the someone from the Canadian University, uh, a professor called me, actually called my supervisor at, at Arizona and asked like, this guy is from Sri Lanka, you know, he's in Arizona. Arizona's weather is actually worse than Sri Lanka in terms of the hot climate. It's almost like Middle East. Now he's applied to a university in, in Alberta, which, is, which can go up to minus 40. He said, is really serious coming there? So my professor had said, why don't you talk to him? So I got a call and he asked me, are you really serious coming to, to my, our university? And I said, said, I'm interested in coming. I said, what do you want? What, 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 what? So I said, I am from a very poor country, from Sri Lanka. I don't have funds to, to do my PhD. If I can have a scholarship, I would come there. We actually had a gentleman's agreement. And then this professor, who actually Professor Desanak knows him too. It's Professor Samari was, was there. And he, they, we, we cannot guarantee. I mean, we guys, you know, we can't guarantee. But he said, by looking at your qualifications, we might be able to get your scholarship. So and I said, if you do that, I'll come to Canada. I kept that word. I got some of the offers in the US. I did not take them. I still believe one of the best decisions I have taken in my life. Right? So I, I went to Canada and never returned back. I never intended to go to Canada when I was in Sri Lanka. Canada is a great country, so that's why I've been living there for the last 25 years. But I actually managed to take that risk at that time. I was in a comfort zone in Arizona, and I, was, I had other admissions in the U.S. While I'm doing that, I decided that I would actually go to Canada, right? which gave me. And the, similarly, the change of careers, the second example I always say, when I was doing at a peak in my research chair, I felt that the right time for me to enter into leadership at the university, and I took the risk, I went there, and I think it worked out, you know, you know thankfully it did work in a, in, a, in a great way. But if I did not take the choice, I would have probably stayed the same. Then maybe I would have been more successful. I don't know that. But all I'm saying is that it actually gave me a much more broader horizon and appreciation about some of the other disciplines and some of the work that, that we have been doing. Okay. So, the, so the next one is, um, is I, I believe that changed a lot of me as a character after I became a senior administrative leader at a university. A word starts from P. What is that? Hmm? No. Actually, we want to see whether there's anyone, anyone uh, training and recognition. No, nope, that's not the one. Okay, anyone else? Sometimes we say that you need anger management, otherwise you'll be in trouble. Can you think of the word now? Patience, right? Patience. Because we might not get everything the way that we plan. It may not be a rosy path, right? But unless you practice and adhere to the principles of patience, it will be really difficult. Patience is really critical, right? Some people have said that I have become more patient once I became a senior leader at the university. I used to be quite aggressive. I didn't uh, like the word no. When somebody comes up with a no, I used to get a bit angry and then a bit aggressive to respond right away and then try to cut them off. But I realized the patience, you need to um, cultivate the patience, 
practice the patience. And sometimes you, you know, you could you could end up in failures, that's okay. Right? It's important, important that you realize that not everything could be successful. Like be patient to um, to get to where you want to be uh, to achieve, right? And again, I'll give you one, one example that during those times where we were at the university due to some civil, uh, not I would not call it civil war, the civil unrest in the country, the universities were closed. Were you in the, were, you were there too, right? Yeah, so, and we actually did not have a future about the universities and I was really, um, I was not sure what to do. And then I applied to a number of universities in, in UK, US, and Australia. But it didn't work. And, and I you know, like to quote, quote, I mean, again, this is not to on, on a faith, but there was a there was a senior monk who actually advised me. And I'll say it in Sinhalese. I say, Mahatya Mukurda Hadisu in Naratya. Oh mean the Kakada. It's not the time to go abroad. Right? And I think I probably got mad with him at that time. Right? Because, you know, trying to cut my plans. But again, I think the patience, you know, you have to be sometimes be patient because it will help you. Actually, it becomes, we call it, you know, you get your um, uh, maturity. I think patience is something that can really help you to enhance them. Okay? Let's go to the next one. O, C, and C. Because I'm combining three keywords that are connected. Let's see what you what are the what are your guesses on the word O, C, and C. I used the word O in the past in one of the slides. And I said Professor Disanaka has that element. Optimistic. All right. That's one. That's O. O stands for optimistic. What's first C and the second C? Uh, and I right away say this is not communication, but communication is really critical. Challenges are really critical. Like they're all connected here, right? But this second C stands for confidence. A third C stands for something really, really important. And as Sri Lankans, we actually are very talented people. Sometimes I'm, I'm worried about that we are not doing follow-up work. Commitment, right? Commitment is really critical. So I'm going to talk about this, these three things in there. Optimistic, uh, confidence, and commitment, right? So those, those are three things that I sort of wanted to talk about. Optimum, optimism is really critical. I think, you know, it's good, you know, as engineers, you know, I think it's important to have that, that optimism that we built into that one. Of course, when you become senior, become leaders of engineering, right? If you're engineer managers, it's really critical to have that optimism in your mindset. But the key is that you build your confidence so that it can enhance your ability to analyze, try new initiatives, taking risks, and to tackle problems in a challenging way, right? It, it might be a problem, some, some of us, to overconfidence, right? That's another negative aspect of this, right? That's why I, I want to tie the confidence with the commitment, because if you're committed to achieve what you want to achieve, I think it's, it's, it's connected to that and say that optimism, building that confidence, and making that commitment to make it happen is going to help you as individuals at whatever the stage in your career as an engineer. Whether you are an engineer in training, whether you are a junior engineer, whether you are a senior engineer, whether you are an engineering leader, right? It's really, really important to have that. And especially I wanted to emphasize the word commitment because commitment really gets us into where we want to achieve even as a country, right? It's not about talking in big things, you know, we are gonna do X and Y and Z, we are gonna do this and that, but don't limit them just to words. Make a commitment to make it happen. And that starts from your roots, at your home, at your school, at your university, at your birthplace, 
right? And then if, if people say, ah, this fellow, you know, he if he's promised something, he's going to deliver it. I think that gives that reputation, right? Because that will add you as a reputable a professional, a reputable engineer. They'll talk about it and say, I think we like to work with so and so because he's a committed person. He's he has all the resources and he will make it happen, or she will make it. Happen. Next one, I'm going to talk about M and T, and this for that, Professor Isamag is an absolute living example. <laughs> I, I'm sorry that I'm taking you as, as my case study today. Right? He's a living example. I'm actually closer, but not as close as him. What do you think is MNT stands for? We will try. What's MNT stands for? Multi multitasking, right? Multitasking. Do multitasking. This is not. This is a really a skill. Right? Some some of those some of them cannot handle more than one activity, one task. Right? And I hear them in our university students and say, "Oh, I have an exam today. I have an exam tomorrow. How am I going to balance and study for that?" Right? Your scheduling, that's where the time management comes here though, too, in a big way. Multitasking, right? That's why I said, probably, again, Professor Zanak is an absolute living example. And he does so many multiple projects, multiple tasks, and several leadership roles. Like, it really helps. And then the key is at the end of the day, when you have a successful on all of them, and that's the real key. And else people say, yeah, He's a, you know, somebody might say he's a, you know, jack of all trades, but masters of nothing, right? You don't want to hear that word, right? So I think those things will start from your fundamental level. Like when you saw me, even when I was at the, you know, at the school, I did a lot of leadership activities, service activities, but at the same time studied, right? So I'm someone that, that I always try to do multitasking and people ask and of bond, they're like, how would you balance it? It's not easy, but you need to practice. It's like in sports, you need to practice to get to the optimum, right? I know my friend, uh, Professor Sanaka, he does some really marvelous multitasking. He's good at all of them, right? And that's the key. As individuals, I'm telling you, that really helps you. Otherwise, you will be only thinking about one aspect of it. You get so much stress. You're focusing on only one aspect of it or two aspects of it. Right? I was at my school and I told them, don't tell the professor say, you know, no. I said, professor said to have three girlfriends together. I said, no, that's not what I meant by multitasking. <laughs> right? Even if you can do that, that's good though, but it will be dangerous. You're taking a huge risk in there, right? So multitasking is something that we, you know, we need to try, right? I, I would a, a encourage you um, to, uh, to do beyond what you're typically uh, committed to do. It really helps you. You know what happens? It actually builds more confidence, right? It helps you to build more confidence. And then at the end of the day, like, you know, then you can make a better commitment, right? The last one. B, H, and F. I think I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to show that one to you because rather than um, nothing is going to be useful, achievable, unless you are happy and have some fun. In our day-to-day -day life, you know, we are, we, our life is busy. You know, we are engaging in a lot of activities. And whatever the technical things that we do or the jobs that we do, right? Is like, I'm too busy, I don't have time. I don't even have time to sleep. I don't have time to deal. No, balance. Balance, right? So you need to make sure while you're doing all your other work, keep some time for yourself, right? Have some time for exercises. Have some time to even check your health. 
right? Until you know you go to and do a blood test, and and then the blood test will tell you X and Y. Don't wait for that. Make sure that you proactively do that because you're helping yourself, you're helping the society, you're helping your family. I think it's important that to have that balance and be happy and do whatever you know things that you could do. Whether you uh, want to watch movies, whether you want to play sports, whether you want to listen to music, and this and that would help so that to have your life be happy, and it really helps you to increase energy, right? So that you could do better. Because this is the way that I saw myself over the years. And I think you can sort of see that I'm, if you take any one of you, am I fit into that same model? I'm pretty sure some of you may be maybe 100% fit into that. Some of you may be fitting in some parts of it. Or some are saying, you know, what is missing here? So like, for example, recently one of my friends said, what about the challenges? I said that challenges are critical, but challenges comes in a bunch of ways. Taking risks with the patience and the uh, optimism is some of them actually are uh, linked to challenges. Enhance your communication. It's really, really important. Right? So I'm going to end up with saying some statements that that is really critical for us. Especially those who people like us professionals in whatever the field, like, I mean, I'm just taking the way engineering right now, anyone. You know, sometimes you feel like you are a juggler, there are too many balls in the air, but you may not see all the balls at once. Right? You might not be able to catch them, all of them. But none of these things that I'm talking about or anyone else, you cannot achieve them alone. I think we need to be supporting, we need to be a good team player, work with each other. If you make that commitment, respect to each other, be a good team player, I think we can achieve better things together. Right? And then also, sometimes when you say that you juggle some balls, some of them will fall into the ground so you can't catch them. But don't be too greedy. It's not going to help you. But the main thing I will say that the last part, enjoy what you do. Stop complaining. Be optimistic. Okay. I'll leave that thought and say, in order for you to be successful, if you think that any one of the thoughts that I indicated, right? Maybe it could be one thing, two things, three things, or maybe the whole model, if you think that could be useful, please try it out. And I want to see, and I wish you all the very best for your careers, whatever the stage that you are in. Thank you very much. Happy to answer any questions from the audience or anyone who wants to uh, to put the questions from the Somebody says happy and funny, and funny is also good. <laughs> Thank you, Abdul. <laughs> okay, any any questions or any um, anyone from questions or I don't know. I can monitor the. Uh, the chat as well. Let's keep the chat open. Any questions? Yeah, uh, for example, you know, there are, there are certain qualities that we have given But now, say, uh, sometimes we can't. Master, you can keep the facts or not. Is there any any anything that you can say like one word uh, to practice this? Uh, uh, then you will automatically become so. And can you say the short? Or you are in problem about the. Uh, you know, I don't get it, but I'm in the. So, for example, you, you, you have a, like a, so many medicine. Right? Oh, oh. So, you have hard to recommend, but of course, of course it's better to take the whole medicine, but at least you don't have to take, uh, take this step that you will recover. Like, 
Something that yeah, so what, what's the key ingredient there? Yeah. Right? What's the key ingredient yeah. there? I think to me, the key ingredient is the, the first word that I'm saying. Set the vision. Really, really, because unless you have the vision, you cannot achieve. I, I'm actually going to get two keywords, vision and the commitment. The commitment is really critical because you can't set vision. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Be, uh, be genuine or something? Genuine, I mean, I think uh, to me, the word genuine comes as a key prerequisite. We need to be genuine anyway. As professionals, I mean, the word ethical, professionalism, and genuine nature are prerequisites. You need it, right? But I think key is to make a connection. Yeah. Vision, vision is important, but then some of them are very visionary. But then you're not, you don't have a commitment. So I think that. How about the, I mean, the, how about the dream? Dream, same as the vision. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, dream, inspire, yeah. You, dream is the dream. dream. Yeah, yeah. You, you will basically, I mean, I think the vision comes with our, we are dreaming. We want to dream to become, we want to be inspired and we want to be dreamed to become X and Y and this, things. We have dreams. So the, I, the, what I say that when we, when we have the big dream, uh, because uh, you 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 have to do this uh, also or more or otherwise you can't achieve the dream. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. People need the dream, but in order to achieve the dream, you have to make sure that you will be taken care of. What you said. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think. I mean, there's a comment. I you know I said back to normal and change to face the challenge. I think it's important that yeah. because I think you know these are some of the good ideas that we have. Because I think, yeah, the thing is hard for me to summarize into one or two words, but I think there are there are lots of aspects to think about it, right? Because again, this is not a one or two year uh, horizon. I mean, yeah, I thought, yeah, but, why I if we ask to follow the several things, we might even get confused. Yeah. But people are not in the same level. Exactly. There are people who are for the people. Some people are genius. Some people are different. Some people are not uh, good at this area, but they do people who good at music or something. Yeah. Maybe small. But if you say that uh, you must have the big dream, yeah. then you can't achieve it. Dream, you are not That's exactly right. Yeah. You know, I mean, setting that dream, setting the vision comes with it, but you can't just have a vision unless you have manageable plan. You need to have simple steps to get to that, right? Now, those a person who is getting out of the university, his vision and his plan is quite different with somebody with a 20 years experience in the field. Their career goals are different, right? I think you need to sort of change that as you go, but some of the keywords, no matter what, are applicable. I mean, the word commitment, taking risks is something that we do it pretty much every day in our lives, right? We have to take risks in our life. So why I say that, I always say that, you know, I have a degree. Yeah. I even say that I have a degree, but even I don't, I don't tell it to my wife also. No. Sometimes our dreams, when I say something, they might laugh at me. You yeah. can't do it. But of course, what happens when I have my dream? Uh, I sleep with the dream. I eat with the dream. I, I do any activity with the dream. You're cherishing with the dream. You're cherishing with the dream. Because you're, you're, yeah, so it's. I don't want to tarnish my name. But I have a dream. Yeah. But but Professor Dishan, sometimes you say that some people dream and then they'll put the dream out because they put the dream out to say that it's for others to recognize, oh, I'm, this is what I'm targeting. That might not be very yeah, good though. Right. You have to keep the dream to yourself. You set your vision to yourself, yes. but you want to have simple steps to get to what achieve that dream, right? And that is that is not going to be easy unless you have those key words uh, I mean, for example, you, you can have a big dream and you may be overconfident to get to there, but if you don't have the patience, you might fail, right? That's why those components are there here and there because it's all part and parcel of it to support that the big dream or the big vision 
Uh, the commitment is really critical, but then you all need to take some some of the other simple steps in there. Right. So the words were, uh, where do you think the update or the uh, continuous professional development coming to the uh, development uh, And that's why I think I would I would encourage you to do in addition on specific technical areas within the within engineering. I think you should actually have some of the programs that are related to some of those cables, right? I mean, I'll take one as an example, risk management. Risk management specific to engineering, right? You know, is something that would be good. And then one aspect is leadership development, right? The problem that I see with our uh, problem with their career. That sometimes they are not updated with the name that they right. Exactly. So, so the software is even what is happening in the world. So yeah. it is, they, they were they were trapped in a model. Yes, so right. Something that uh, they wanted to leave very complex. Right? Yeah. So how we overcome that? Yeah, I mean again, principles of agility are something. Agility management is something that would be really important for our engineers. Like, I mean, I challenge because I, you know, I'm all, I also sometimes work as a consultant on some of the projects, right? In my projects, I challenge when they come up with a certain design and say, how do you enhance the value of the design? We call it value engineering. So we do value engineering for engineering design. We do constructability for the contractors. Because at the end of the day, there's an investor who's willing to pay money for a project. And, and investor wants, the owner wants a great design, a great, great, you know, um, a product at the end of the day, which is sustainable and then uh, reduce the cost of maintenance. Think about it, right? So for that, if you have valuable designs and that's why we said, you know, things like value, value engineering, constructability, some of those things can help, right? But a young engineer might not feel the value of it because you have to go into practice to see what's happening in the industry, learn from examples, learn from mistakes, and then, then they'll try that. Right. Lot to do. Yeah, no, there are no questions anyway. Yeah. Oh, the following two words, back to normal and change to face the challenge. So, you know, uh, I, I don't know what you mean back to normal because uh, I think, yeah, so this is, I, I feel like back to normal because actually, the you know, in my opinion, COVID taught us a different lesson. We had a lot of challenges with COVID. And we lost so many people. It's not a good thing. That's a huge pandemic. But we were running at an un unsustainable life in ourselves. Were you willing to say no to anything before COVID? You take anything. We we'll take grant. We take anything. We don't. We don't want to say no. We, people thought that oh yeah, you need to travel to these places to get things done. Now today we realize now travel is also being challenged now, right? You can say some of the things if we during the COVID time we made our lives, we did things using virtual world, and we continue, right? So back to normal in the sense I have to I had to really understand the word what is normal means, right? So that you set the standards for what normal means, and then when you come back to that, are we back in the same mold? Are we back in the same situation? Are we doing the same things that we used to do it, or are we doing things differently? And then at the same time, I mean, it's true that as we go. We face many challenges, and I know if you take 2022, for example, Sri Lanka. I mean, right after pandemic, with everything that happened during that year, with our economic crisis, with the Aragale, right, changing the leadership of the country, right, huge big things, and then, and also the cost of living, right. And I think those challenges are continuing. And we have an you know, we have economic crisis, we have energy crisis. I mean, if you if you look at the challenges, we have tons of challenges. But you know, I, and I I'll say an example. Twenty seventeen, I had discussions with some of the key people, including government, to talk about suggesting an energy engineering program 
in Sri Lanka. Right? Because we have our engineering program, very standard, same old ones. How many new programs have come to engineering? Right? Even Stanford University, the oil and gas engineering is now called energy engineering because they are now talking about more on renewable side of things rather than the old oil and gas stuff. We need to change going into that one. I mean, so likewise, I think, you know, facing challenges means we will have to have that vision to think 10, 20 years from now, what would be the best for the country so that our education system needs to change so that our university graduates will come up with skill set that will be needing to face that, that thing. I'll give an example. Actually, my one of my mentors, Professor Sanaka knows him. Um, he's one of the great engineers from Sri Lanka, Professor Chandana Virasing, who is at the University of Calgary. He was our former Dean of Engineering. So one day he had gone, this is around 2002, I believe, when he was the Dean, he went to Australia and he heard the, the program called Software Engineering. Those days, universities had electri electrical engineering, electronics engineering. Some of them had computer engineering. He heard the word software engineering and he had no idea what is software engineering. He came back to Calgary and then told them, let's explore software engineering. And we started a new program in software engineering in 2006. Not successful. Students didn't want to go to software engineering. That was the last choice of the students. Today is the number one demanding program. You see that? As a leader, you heard something and he didn't even know what is software engineering. But you thought you bring that one into your university as a dean, and that's what the deans are supposed to do. You know, think about bringing a new uh, things into your campuses and new curriculums, new programs into that one. And as a result, that you we build it, and today we have a most popular program. So, likewise, in even in engineering, we cannot be just keeping our traditional ones. We need to think about what would be the proliferated programs coming in there so that we will educate our students and then train our engineers in these areas. So that's my answer to facing the challenges. Script? Yes, go ahead. Maybe you can see it as a model and it would be interesting or one of your ideas. No, I mean, I, I think, yeah, actually I thought about that. Yeah. Actually, this came up in during COVID time. I was invited by University of Peradeniya to give a talk. And that's where I first, first presented this model. I was thinking about, okay, they wanted me to talk about uh, the career development. So I said, to do a career development, I thought about what happened to me? What made uh, success to me. What are the things that I pay attention? And that's where I developed that that model and then presented that model. Actually, that talk is on on YouTube as well on on you know Superadinia Engineering Society. Um, where we have to talk about it, right? But again, it could be ten things. It could be like, but I just build it up into seven models. But but I think when I look back and um, and think about each one of them, it has several parts that are really uh, uh, are key components in that. I mean, I didn't talk about many examples. I, you know, sometimes I talk about many examples of each one of them. But I think you know, when I look back and say, yeah, this is a really a validation of myself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for inviting me. And so all the very best. It is a wonderful presentation and very good lecture. I think uh, I can understand. I can see everyone has enjoyed it. And I, especially your friend, I, he made a lot of questions as well, right? I think uh, whatever it is we 
we we need to appreciate as a small even though, uh, token of appreciation, a small gift. So I cordially invite our Professor, President Dilek, Mr. Ranjit Dilsanayaka, to present the moment to you. And I think the yeah, okay, after that we do a photo of them. No, we'll get the photo now. All right, okay. Yeah. yeah, I call in the band to give a lot of thanks. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Janakaruan Pura, for your informative and uh, very inspiring session today. And it was really an eye opening session for all of us to uh, develop our own career and as well as there were really interesting inputs for the development of the country as well. Uh, thanks again, sir, for your sharing your valuable time and experience with us. And also, I would like to thank uh, President-elect Professor Ranjit Bisanayaka and all the council members for your presence today. And also, uh, I, would, I would like to thank the ISL Secretariat and the IT department and the Publicity Department for making this event a success by maintaining the host, hosting arrangements. And also, last but actually not least, I would like to thank all of you for your active participation through physically and as well as through online platform. Thank you very much all. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs>